Hey guys, Yunane here. A little while back I made a game for the Unreal Engine 4 Mega Game Jam, Big Rick Mayhem. You might have seen a trailer for it on my channel. And I decided to uh, share this project with all of you. So that you can use it however you want. Maybe you can learn something from it. Maybe you can use it in another project you want to use. So in the description will be a download link to the whole project and feel free to use anything you want. All the assets and blueprints are free of use. Now be careful because the project was made in version 4.9 of Unreal Engine and it might not work in 4.10. I haven't really tested that. Let me just show you, show you the game for if you haven't seen the trailer. So let's play. Uh, you got a simple uh, main menu with what you can do. Let's start it up. Now you're just this uh, little guy, this ninja. And you can punch people. You can punch other ninjas. Now every time you punch a ninja, you get us uh, a little bit of extra special uh, power. Uh, it's about 20% each hit you do. And with that special power, you can do two abilities. One is a heal with Q, like this. And you lose pretty much all of the power you have in your special ability. Uh, the other one is a force push, in which you can push people away, uh, which is pretty uh, pretty funny. Especially if they're uh, near the uh, end of the trailer. Or when they just jump, you can just knock them back like that. <laughs> So that's, that's pretty much the game. Uh, you can knock them off like that and they will uh, die when they uh, hit the ground or when they drop in between the, the truck and the, and the trailer. Like here. They can die. Or you can die if you drop down there. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's essentially the, the game. Okay. Now that you've seen the game, let me just show you a couple of things that you might want to look into. As you can see, it's just a little, little road that I made. And the truck is just standing still. All the trees and all the lamp posts and all the uh, guardrails, those are all moving. But the truck itself is just standing still. Now the way I did this is by um, having all the trees have a collision. As you can see the, the red circle, which is a collision. And every time that collision hits this box, this uh, tree redirect volume, I called it, they will be moved to one of these spawn points over here. One of these five. So every tree has an array of start positions, which uh, are shown here from one to five. And they will all spawn here. So every time a tree hits that box, it will just respawn here and then it will just keep moving. Now in moving tree, which is the, the object, you can see that every time the, the tree hits that uh, box, it will also set the mesh to one of three. I got three, three of the tree meshes and they will also scale randomly from 0 0.8 to 1.4. So that's just to keep it a little bit interesting in the back. Uh, the add actor local offset, this is the event tick. This is the movement part. So every tick, the, the tree moves about 80, uh, 80 units in the Y direction. And that's pretty much all you have to do to uh, make it move. Now in the uh, on component begin overlap, this is the, the part where when it hits that, uh, that box at the end, it will uh, iterate through the positions and just uh, goes randomly in one of the five positions. It gets that location and then it sets the actor location to um, to that place and then randomizes the tree. So every time it hit that box, set the actor location, randomize the tree, and then uh, it comes by again. So at every one time you only see about 10, uh, 10 trees. And that's all, all the trees that um, that will spawn in the in the game. Now we also have that with the moving road lamp. Uh, it's pretty much the same, just without the randomization, because the road lamps are all the same. 
Uh, the row dividers are also the same. I could have made this one object and made it the uh, parent of these objects, but it was, I had to go quick with that uh, mega gem, so I didn't bother. Now, the other thing we could uh, look out for, I also made this kill box, made it a bit big, but <laughs> that's fine. Uh, this box is, uh, is the box that uh, kills everyone that touches it, so that's pretty much uh, the kill box here. Every time it, uh, it hits the event that the actor overlaps this, uh, this box, it makes the, the character die. All the characters in the game are all based on ninja character. Now in ninja character, it's pretty much all the basics in here. The taking, the damage, the punching, destroying the actors, making them stunned for a moment. Initialization. It's all just pretty much in here. And all the other characters are all derived from this character. So they all have these functions, which is pretty handy. Now also the dying is handled in here. Which is um, disabling of some collisions and then enabling them for the ragdolling. You just uh, look through it a bit. You know, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Also respawning is handled in here. For the character itself to set the physics back and set the collisions properly again now as you can see you got a couple of things here um the hand collisions which are just the collisions i um i parented to the bones these are used to determine if we hit someone when we punch so this is one of the ways you can make it so you can determine if you hit something with a with a melee attack. That's that's pretty much done in punch, as you can see here. You can set the collision response every time we uh, we do a punch. We first we check if we can punch. If we can punch, set the collision to overlap for the right hand first, because we do a one two. We do a one punch. Uh, we do a right punch and then a left punch, and then we do an animation. And then a, we play a sound, pretty much. Now in the hero character, which is derived from the ninja character, there's a couple uh, more things here, which are... Um, because this is the character you control, so here... Are, these are all the controls with all the functions. You got all the specials. We got the good game here as well. We got the initialization here. Uh, the hitting of enemies here, when uh, we overlap with an enemy, we check if it's uh, if it's the player, because um, some of the overlaps with the collisions we don't want uh, the player hitting himself, so we need to check for that. Now, if it's a ninja character, we do the untake damage, which is in ninja character itself. Then we disable the punch collision because we don't want to do multiple punches with only one punch. And then we add special. So the add special is pretty much just uh, adding that 20% uh, of special every time we hit something. Which is here. Just simple, uh, simple variable. Okay. Now we also got the game over here. We just check if the health is, uh, is uh, zero. We got the heal power up. So if you press uh, Q, you heal yourself. You can, can't go over your uh, max health. That's what the clamp does here. We do a simple uh, particle effect. And here's the force power uh, push. Uh, this one uh, also does a particle effect. And it launches the character, it hits. So launch character is pretty uh, pretty cool to use. It's really handy for if you want to fling other players or the player itself some way. You can just use launch character. It's really a uh, really good function. Okay, now what else is there? Uh, pretty much it, I think. Oh yeah, we could check to the spawn enemies. It's not that uh, complicated. We just spawn the enemy. 
Uh, the enemy is also a different uh, different class. Yeah, enemy is in uh, AI. So the enemy is, uh, is located here. You can check. It's simple AI. Yeah, I didn't use a uh, behavior tree for this one because it wasn't really needed. And I'm not that great at behavior trees yet. So I decided to just keep it simple. Now we check here in the event tick to see if uh, if we have to move towards the player, if we're idle or moving. Just handle uh, the turning uh, movement, just so he turns around towards the player. If the the player is higher than the the enemy character, then he will jump, which is uh, pretty hilarious sometimes if you uh, jump uh, in front of him. <laughs> Now movement and turning, it's just turning towards the player. And here's just a simple, uh, when the enemy dies, it adds uh, one to the enemies defeated so that uh, we can display it on the screen. There's some punch player. When, um, when the enemy is close to the player, we got a overlap uh, circle on the player. I'll show you that in a second here. It's in the... Yeah, here it is. This big circle. When the enemy is in this circle, he will uh, start throwing punches. So this way uh, we know that the enemy is close to the player. There's some punches. It's pretty much the same as uh, as the player. What else could I show? Uh, the spawn timer. It's not that uh, amazing. I just check every 30 seconds. I check the timer. And then we up the enemy count. So every 30 seconds you get an extra enemy the next, uh, next time it spawns. This way it gets harder every 30 seconds pretty much. But after a while, you, you just get overwhelmed. So that's pretty much the difficulty uh, I made. It's it's pretty simple. It's, I didn't want to make it too hard, too complicated. It's a game jam uh, after all. <laughs> I only had like uh, five days to make this. So. Okay. So the way to spawn the enemies is by... Um, I got these objects in the game here. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. And I added a target, which is a variable of this object, which shows where the where the truck is. So this way, I know when uh, when an enemy spawns on this on this uh, on this spawn point, it knows that it has to jump to the left to get on the truck. So that's my way of uh, of them jumping on the on the truck, pretty much. So every time the spawn timer is up, it spawns an enemy, and then gets a random spawn uh, location. The spawn positions are those two um, uh, those two positions on the left and on the right, and then spawns an enemy at that location, pretty much. And it just checks here which side it is. And then launches it the way um, it launches it to the left or to the right, depending on the target. Okay, guys, that's about it. There's a couple of things I still wanted to do with this project, but didn't have the time for it. I wanted to make signs coming from the right so that you have to dodge it by jumping over it or jumping under it. And you can kick other uh, enemies into it. But yeah, I didn't want to, didn't have the time to actually do that. So... That's unfortunate, but at least I'm uh, I'm happy with uh, the rest of the outcome. Um, hope you guys uh, like the project. Do with it whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> and um, yeah, more tutorials will be coming as well, uh, guys. I'm just swamped at, at work at the moment, so I just hardly have the time to uh, to do anything uh, tutorial related. But I'm hoping to do another tutorial next week. Maybe the week after that, 
and there's a couple tutorials I got lined up that uh, you might like. So stay tuned for those, and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.